Hello! Today we're looking at gouache. I've been getting more into this medium lately and I really enjoy it. Now this gouache is not just any paint. It's really really cheap gouache from Mia Arts. They are a Chinese company and they make those paint sets available through Amazon. Now I'm not an experienced gouache painter and this is sort of the point. I started out using Holbein gouache, which is very good artist quality gouache, but the problem with that is that I'm afraid to waste it. It's my good paint. Here we have a set that is really generous and perfect for practicing. Now what I'm going to do in this video is open up the box, open the little jelly cups, probably get paint everywhere, swatch the colors, then do a portrait study like I usually do in my sketchbook. All right, so let's open this. Okay, so we've got a palette inside the lid like this. It's the same color as the rest of the box, which is probably not ideal, uh, but uh, for this cheap, we can't really complain. Now I'm going to open the little jelly cups. Alright, so here we have the colors. Uh, some of them seem a little bit separated, but that's okay, you can mix it up. I've left them in the order that uh, they were in, but I will probably rearrange them later to something a bit more um, fitting my logic. So, yeah. Alright, so let's get to swatching these. So I've prepared some swatches in my sketchbook and I'm going to be using the palette that we have here. So the colors in this set are deep red, ponceau, which is a sort of warm red, rose, ochre, earth yellow, which is more of our yellow ochre, lemon yellow, then we have violet, medium yellow, titanium white, ultramarine, acid blue, just regular white, Prussian blue, grass green, jade green, uh, black, burnt umber, and pale green. All right, so now that the paint is mostly dry, we can take a look and see there's not too much of a drying shift. Um, gouache tends to do that. Uh, the colors are nice and opaque, and they're pretty nice. So next up, let's do an actual painting. Okay, so a bit of a change in camera angle here because I moved to my computer desk so I could have my reference up on my monitor while I was painting. I'll also put it up on the screen now so you can see what I'm working from. Anyway, apart from being really cheap, this set of 18 30 milliliter paint cups cost me under $20. It's probably the prettiest paint set I've ever seen. It's available in mint and pink, and while I wanted to get the mint one at first, the pink sort of grew on me, and well, the mint was sold out anyway. 
Another point to keep in mind is that at this price point you're not going to get very light fast paints so those are best used for practice and getting used to the medium or just for using in your sketchbook. I was actually going to paint this in my sketchbook but then decided that I wanted to work bigger. My sketchbook is A5 and I would have really struggled getting tiny details done so I got some of my leftover super cheap watercolor paper and used that instead. I wouldn't be using it for watercolors anyway since I've switched to 100% cotton paper for that and now I can't go back. So just as an aside, who am I painting? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is uh, Mia, guitarist and band leader of the Japanese rock Fike band Muk, who are pretty awesome and whom I've seen live multiple times and it's always an incredible experience. Even if it's an informal acoustic live at the end of a recording that they didn't rehearse, uh, the live I mean. but. I digress, we're here for Mia the gouache, not Mia the guitarist. So what do I think of these paints? They're pretty fun to use. The other experience I've had with cheap gouache was Turner, and I absolutely hated them. They're kind of goopy, but this paint is quite creamy and I had no texture issues. It goes on really smoothly, it's easy to mix and easy to dilute as well. It's also kind of fun to just glop paint from the little cups onto the palette and since it's so cheap you can just let go in experiments since even if this doesn't work out, well, you haven't wasted a lot of money and you will still have learned something. So I need to reiterate here that I am a beginner at gouache and thus have no real idea what I'm doing. I'm trying vaguely to remember my experience with oil paints from back in university to get back into painting with uh, this opaque medium. So I'm starting by trying to block in some colors and not getting into mixing straight away. It also took me a little bit to remember that lightening a color is best done with white, not by diluting the paint like we do in watercolors. Even though I theoretically know that, the realization always takes a little bit to kick in when I actually paint. Speaking of whites, we get two of them with this set, which is nice. One is a titanium white, which is supposed to be stronger and more opaque, and the other is just white, which I guess is mixing white, but in practice I didn't see much difference when using them. I sort of alternated between the two in this painting. You can also see that I rearranged the little cups in the box. I did write in pen on the cup to be able to tell which white was which, as well as with the pale green and grass green, which are very close in hue too. I didn't really like using the built-in palette. The pinkness of it didn't bother me too much, I could mix the colors pretty well, but it's just very lightweight and it kept sliding around on my desk as I was trying to mix colors. I think I'll just keep it inside the lid and use a porcelain plate or palette with uh, these paints in the future. Let's talk layering. Layering in gouache is a little weird. The paint reactivates with water really really easily, so depending on what you want to do, you need to be really careful with how much water you have on your brush for each layer. That said, you can do it if you leave the previous layer to dry out completely, but don't expect to be doing very light glazes or anything. You're not supposed to anyway, I think. This is an opaque medium and you probably want to use it as such. One thing that I do love about gouache is how forgiving it is of the substrate you use to paint on. Watercolors are affected so much, but here I got some crappy old paper that I found somewhere and the paint goes on just fine. Watercolors would end up looking really blotchy and messy on this paper. Gouache is much more easygoing, I guess. The opacity really helps. Oh, there is one thing I should probably mention about those Mia paints they have a smell. It's not very strong, but it is there, so if you're very sensitive, you might not want to use them. It's not a bad smell, it's sort of milky or chalky. 
At this price, those paints are probably 99% chalk or something. I have no idea actually, the information on the Mia Arts website is very very sparse. Another thing, while on their website, they do mention and list refills both as cups and little weird liquid pack things. I haven't seen those for sale anywhere internationally. So unless the company decides to export those, when you're out of a color, you're out. I do think you could keep the box and clean out the cups and use it for other paints, but I'm not sure, those cups are awfully big. These paint sets also have the option of coming with a set of paint brushes. They are long handled, very stiff brushes. They do come in a very pretty box whose color matches the plastic of the paint set. However, I decided not to bother with them because from what I've seen they seem a bit too stiff for my taste. I prefer using synthetic watercolor brushes for gouache. They're comfortable to use but slightly stiffer than natural hair brushes so they match this thicker medium. If you're interested in the brushes, it's just an extra $10 or so though, so you could get them and try them out for yourself. I took a couple of breaks while painting. This small study just became something much bigger somehow. Anyway, I left the paint uncovered as I did. It did dry out a little bit on the surface. Some colors especially such as the burnt umber and the rose, I think, but coming back from my break, I just took an eyedropper with some water, dripped some on the paint, and it was fresh and reactivated in no time. Lindsay the Frugal Crafter here on YouTube actually reviewed those paints, and she mentioned that she found them a bit watered down as they were fresh from the box. I didn't think that was the case, but she does have a lot more experience with gouache and different types of paint than I do. In any case, she mentioned that you could just leave the lid of the box cracked open a bit for the paints to dry out in the cups. That would get rid of the excess water, and you could just rehydrate them when you want to paint, as if you were using a set palette like some people uh, like to make. Okay, so in conclusion, I had a lot of fun with this set. I would recommend it if you just want to get into gouache or if you like shiny plastic colorful things. Remember, it's probably not light fast and we don't have any pigment information. It's more in the category of toy paint. Still, it's really nice and fun toy paint. Great texture and the whole setup just makes me want to paint when I look at it, which is a nice bonus. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that the information was useful for you. Please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more content, hit the notification bell to be notified of new uploads, and you can find my social media links and Redbubble shop in the description below, as well as the link to my Patreon. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!